user, is that Haley? With a yeah, okay, that's you. So somehow I um I made myself into the host also. So I don't know. Um Joanne gave me the number. Oh so. good, because she asked me if I could do it and I couldn't figure out how to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I don't know who opened the meeting. I think it was Anita who opened the meeting. And then she somehow did her magic and then everybody was able to get on even without asking me. So that's cool. Okay, very good. Anyway, good morning from Joanne. She's on her way. She's on her way. She's traveling now in Gibraltar. She's going to Gibraltar, the Shabbos. So she asked me to say hi and... Let's continue learning. And yes, it's recording, good. Okay, who's Mrs. Singer? I can't see you. I see you, but I can't see you clearly. Oh, there you are. Remind me your first name. No, we didn't, we didn't hear you because you're still muted. Can you hear me no. now? Yeah, now we hear you. Remind me your first name. Hannah. Hannah, right. Live in um, right. Enjoy well, um, look forward to your show every week. Well, um, I also look forward to this year. I look forward to seeing all my friends in the UK and all over the world. And hi, Jenny. She just got on. Jenny just got on. And uh, Mrs. Rowe just got on. Aviva just got on. Okay. Hello, hi. Hi, Aviva. How are you? Okay. Baruch Hashem, how are you? It's so nice to see you. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. Okay, so now we are on Perak Ayin Aleph, ninety-one, uh, seventy-one, and this is the Perak that we're going to ask Hashem to help us to trust Him, and we need Hashem's trust. We need to trust Him super now, right? We need to trust Him. We have to rely on Him. Every single day, um, you know, today in Yerushalayim Kodesh is a gorgeous day. Probably in Beit Shemesh is also beautiful. It's just perfect weather. This is a perfect weather day. I have no idea how many degrees it is. Anyway, I forgot to add the Celsius. But it's sunny and it's just a little crisp. It's not hot. It's sunny and more nice. It's just perfect. As well as Hashem. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for joining us. And so we're continuing. We're in Pasuk Dalit now. Perak Ayin Aleph, chapter 71, uh, verse 4. And this, we could stay on this Pasuk for all day, because look at what it says. Elokai. Elokai means Hashem, my God. Palteni miyad rasha. Rescue me from the hands of the evil ones. Mikap me'avel v'chometz. From the hand of the me'avel is the person who does evil. It's interesting that in English it's the same word me'avel, avel, evil, and the chometz. The word chometz is from the word is connected to the word Hamas, believe it or not. That means violence. So tell me, is there any more relevant pasuk than this? Hashem save me using the word kalteni. What? One second. Somebody has to get muted. No, me. we have to mute you there. Um, let me just ask you, can you see me now when I'm on this? Just some, what, what, when, Devara Hinza, can you unmute yourself and just tell me, can you see me now on the screen? Yes, I can. Thank you. Yes, I can see you. Thank you. Okay, good. Only because I switched my screen because I have to be on the screen and, with the names on it. So thank you. Okay. So um, the word Paltani, we call the we call the um, those who are those who are uh, captured. We call them Plitim. Paltani means rescue me, rescue the, rescue the. So it's one of those words that has the same word and it's opposite. So we're saying this pasuk now for all the all those people who are. And the Khatufim, those who were kidnapped, and those who were in the army. 
and all Jews all over the world. Elohai, Kalteni Miyad Rasha, Mikaf Me'avel Dechometz. Rescue, rescue all the Jewish people now from all the evil people in the world that want to destroy us. And I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of people in the world want to destroy the Jewish people right now, which is so unusual because, well, it's not really unusual, but you would think that after what we went through, but no, it, it, I, I heard one person, one evil person who's actually in London, he was in a, he was heading a demonstration in London, a Hamas, a Muslim Hamas, and he said they want to make massacres commonplace. That was what he said. They, it's their job to make massacres commonplace until they get what they want. So we're living in a crazy, crazy world. It began, if you didn't notice, it began already. I mean, this craziness has been has been unfolding slowly, slowly for a very long time. But once they began to say girls could be boys and boys could be girls and I could be a uh, chimpanzee and I can identify with as a kangaroo, when, when they, once they started with Valbel mixing up, society, then it became Sidon. So you guys remember the, the Midrashim about Sidon. Sidon, everything was the opposite. In other words, Hachnasus Orchim, hosting, hospitality, taking in guests, that was considered a crime. Giving people charity, that was considered a crime. Giving people food when they were hungry, that was considered a crime. Being selfish, being immoral, that was considered virtuous. That was why Hashem took Sidon and turned it upside down. And guess what? We're not looking so far to see that that's going to happen in the civilized world that we call civilized. Unless they get themselves back into the, the normal mode, they're going to topple one by one by one. They're going to all be destroyed. And I'm not just saying that. All the big tzaddikim here are already saying that. Um, and I'm sure that you've heard this, but if you didn't, I'll tell you. That on we have a we have a teaching that on the tenth day of the fast of the tenth of Tammuz no the tenth of Tevez on the fast of the tenth of Tevez one second on the fast of the tenth of Tevez uh, it's decreed in heaven whether this year will be the Beis Hamikdash year and the tzaddikim said yes because all the years before we never made it and the tzaddikim now in this generation here in Eretz Israel. I forgot which Sadiq, which Kabbalist and Kubal said that this year on the 10th of Teves, it was decreed that this year is the year of redemption. So all we need to do is get through this year. Um, as you know, my my uh, recommendation is to associate yourself with Eretz Yisrael, which means saying to Hillen, praying every single day, praying every day for the soldiers and praying for the citizens, and just praying for Hashem, and Hashem also wants this exile to be over. That's for those of you who can come here, come. For those of you who cannot yet come here, then make sure that you have Israel, Eretz Israel, in your mind all day long, not just like a little bit, but all the time. I saw today a clip. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. One of the great rabbis sent out this clip. He has a, a, a one of the he's a Baal, you know rabbi for Bali Shuvas, so he has all these media, uh, social media. Actually, he doesn't have social media. He just has Telegram, which is a kosher thing to be on. So he sent a clip of a mifaked. A mifaked means a commander, an older guy, not a young guy, not one of the nineteen-year-olds, but uh, you know someone who's been in the army for many years. And he's a commander. And in one of the battles, he got blinded. He lost one of his eyes. You know that they don't have the proper goggles to protect their eyes. Uh, somebody has to do something about that. So sometimes if the if the lower lane, not on any June anymore, if a shrapnel, if shrapnel uh, from a missile hits a person, so that's where the when they call a person who's moderately or mildly injured. It just means they got full of shrapnel. They might have lost an arm or lost a leg. That's called mild to moderate, moderate injuries, which is crazy because when you see someone says moderately injured, you say, okay, Baruch Hashem, their life is not in danger. My I have a friend who goes to the hospitals 
uh, once a week to deliver food to the people who are taking care of the, from Eze Mission, people who are there taking care of their relatives. And they need, you know, they have to be by the bed all day long by their relative or by their, whoever they're taking care of. They don't have time to go out to the cafeteria and sit down and order a meal. Certainly not, not, all, not all the meals anyway are so healthy. So Eze Mission is one of the many organizations that women, I guess, and men, I just know the women's group, they, um, there's a huge factory going on. What do they do? They shop, they deliver the, they shop for fruits and vegetables and bread and, and spreads. They deliver that to different people's houses who put, to, put together their food packages. The food packages are then picked up by other people who then transport to the hospital and given out by other people. So there's a lot of people in this chain of service. My friend who's been going for years, not just because of the war, she's been going for years, that's her volunteer work. She said that she was in the hospital two days ago. She goes on uh, Wednesday, maybe it was yesterday that she was. Uh, yeah, it was yesterday. She um, she said she couldn't believe what she saw yesterday. She saw a soldier who was bandaged like a mummy from head to toe, just his eyes had a slit in the head. He was burned. Then she saw another young man that the father, he was um, he was in a, um, how do you say, intubated. You know, he was sleeping. And the father, a young boy, I think he was missing. I don't know what it was. And, the, and his father of this boy who was in the vet, who was, he said, he asked, um, you know, he said he just wants to pray that the boy should die. It's his son. But he said he can't tolerate what he might look like after the people are going through terrible things. Anyway, this commander in the army, he lost an eye. And as soon as he got the okay from the hospital, he went back to Gaza to resume his command of his platoon. And he has a big bandage over his eye with, with tape, with gauze tape. It's all bandaged on one eye. And he came. And his, guy, his guys, his the ones that he was commanding officer over, they couldn't believe it. Like, what are you doing here? Leave. He said, I'm not leaving you guys. As long as I can function, I'm back. So there was, who can imagine such a, who can imagine such a thing? You know that I heard yesterday a very interesting thing. The Rabbanim are saying that this is the war of Amalek. It's true. We're in the war of Amalek, the final battle. And it seems that Netanyahu said, said that in a speech. He didn't say we're in the war of Amalek. He just said the enemy is like Amalek. I forgot. He said it in, in a different way. And in the Hague, Yemach Shemam, may they be obliterated. Or do tshuva, that's even better. They looked up what that meant. The South African guy, sorry, South African people, but the South African guy, he has a bunch of advisors. And they found out what Amalek means. And they used that as the argument to say that we're committed to obliterating Hamas, which we are. But they say we're obliterating all the Arabs there, which they're all, the truth is, ladies, I hate to tell you this, but they're all Hamas. All of the people in Gaza are Hamas. So anyway, uh, we're in this incredible, incredible time. And the beauty of the Jewish people is just shining through, just shining through. Everybody's giving money. If you don't know where to give money, there's plenty of organizations now that go, the main, money goes straight. It doesn't go through any intermediaries. You could, you could, you could send money to Eretz Israel all the time to people. Send it to me. I'll distribute it. Mamish, I know a woman who they, today, right now, I wanted to go with her and surprise you and bring you the shear from from Gaza, but she didn't let me. I have a friend who goes every Thursday. Her her son sponsors this. He he she has a big big car and she goes every Thursday to the south to as far as far south as she can go and she distribute they they just unload her car. There's I don't know I don't know how many gallons, tons of not tons, but of cholent and kugel, Shabbos food that they should eat on Thursday. So there's so many people doing so much, so much. That's our beauty, our beauty. And Hashem loves us. So Elokaini Paltaini, we just did a rescue me, rescue all the, to say this possibly ladies, for the, for the, um, for the captured, 
and for the people in the army and people people in the hospital. Rescue us. Rescue us. Give back that guy his eye. Give that guy back his feet, his legs. Kiata seventy one. We're seventy one and now we're on Pasuk. Hey. Kiata tikvati, because you Hashem are my tikva. Only you are my hope, Hashem. Hashem Elohim. Now I want to, I want you to I'm gonna say the I, if you're looking inside a Tehillim, I want to show you something because sometimes you might not know how to pronounce this. So I'm gonna read the whole Pasuk with Hashem's name because you see that it's written one way and it's pronounced differently. Okay, so now, you, re you ready to look inside in the Hebrew? It says, we're on Perak Ayin Aleph 71, Pasuk Hey, Pasuk 5. I'm going to read the whole Pasuk. When you read a whole entire Pasuk, you're allowed to read it with God's name. So here goes. Ki tikvati Adonai Elohim Mivtachi Minurai. Now you see that the second word, the first word is written Aleph Dalet Nun Yud, and you pronounce it exactly as it's written. The second word is written Yud and a Hey, and then a Vav, and the final Hey. You're used to pronouncing that word also Aleph Dalet Nun Yud, Ado, right? That's how, we, that's how we pronounce Hashem. But if you look at the dots on the bottom, you'll see that under the Yud, there's an S sound. And by the Hey, there's an O sound. And under the Vav, there's an E sound. And that is the way we pronounce that is Elohim. So, because you never have two names of God, except for the Pasuk and Chumash that we say by Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, Hashem, Hashem, Kel Racham, Chanun. You never have two names of Hashem written and pronounced one after the other in the same exact way. So I'm going to read it again for you. Ki tikvati Adonai Elohim, Mivtachim min Urai. Okay, so the second way you the second way that you read it is the second name is Elohim. Okay, now what does that mean? Can, yeah, I, can, can I ask you? Is yes. it always whenever it's vowelized that we pronounce it Elohim, or only when it's back to back, or is there a rule? It's only when it's back to back. Usually, it's when there's two names of Hashem one after the other, and the second is pronounced Elohim. Sometimes it is, you have to look, I should really make you a list because it's written five times in Tehillim when Hashem's name is written, Yud Kei Vav Kei, but it's pronounced Elohim because of the way the dots are. So maybe I'll believe Nether, believe Nether, I'll try to um, make you a list of those because I remember I once told this to some, someone that I know and she was devastated because her whole life she was reading those Psukim incorrectly and here she thought she finished the whole Sefer Tehillim so many times, so many times, but really... So yeah, it's usually when they're together, and it's usually in this way: Aleph Aleph Nun Yud, and then Yud Kei Vav Kei. So you know you can't say you can't say Adzo, the name of Hashem Adzo, and then Adzo. You can't say that it's one after the other. So the second, if you look at the dots, you'll see that it's Elokim. So here, Kiatasi Kvati. So you know that we have the, the national anthem that the Zionists made in the state of Israel is Hatikva, right? Hatikva, and the word Hatikva means the hope. And what they were trying to convey was that Israel is the hope of the Jewish people. The land of Israel and the state of Israel is the hope of the Jewish people. And you know that there's a very big controversy because they didn't put God in the national anthem. And they didn't put any refer reference to anything emuna, emuna in Hashem. So there was a big controversy and some people will never sing that song. And I know some people who actually, if they're ever in an event that they're singing that, they'll actually walk out of the room because they feel that it's a song that was trying to hijack the heart of Jews and take them away from Torah and try to assimilate them into the consciousness of nationalism, language, Zionism, Jewish culture, quote unquote, and take away Torah. And that really was the problem with the, you know, with the religious the problem that the religious people had with Zionism was not about, um, you know, coming back, coming back and living in the land of Israel. It was about ch trying to make an exchange and blot out or minimize Torah and, and or just like, you know, put it in the dustbin of, uh, you know, legend and stuff like that and exchange it for uh, 
Zionism for, you know, revival of the Hebrew language, revival of Jewish culture, and the holidays are all watered down. And that's how the, that's why the religious were so against the Zionists. And the certain people who were hopeful and positive, so they said, okay, we're going to, this is the stage, this is a, this is a, it's a process that Hashem is giving us back slowly, slowly, the land of Israel. And now we see that in the end, we see what happened, and we see that Baruch Hashem, everybody, I think I read, 70% of, of Israel wants Mashiach. I'm talking about, I don't know what, I don't know what percentage of Jews consider themselves observant, but not 70%. Uh, 90% of Jews, or 95% of Israelis, I'm talking about Israelis, 95% of Israelis say they believe in Hashem, and they're, they're ma'aminim. They don't always keep mitzvahs, whatever, but they're ma'aminim. 70% now are saying they want Mashiach. I saw this in a, in a thing, in a second, a survey. So, ki ata tikvati. You, Hashem, are my tikva, not ha for the song, not the state of Israel, not the Medina, not the government. You're, I try, I'm, you're my, I'm putting my hope in you, Hashem. And even though the government people, some of them are trying hard, and the army, for sure, is putting their bodies on the line. But the bottom line is we hope to Hashem and not to anything else, Hashem Elohim. And that's why when we have Hashem's name written in this unusual form, there are certain times when um, the, when the Dovin Amelch wants the, our eyes to pay attention. Like, for example, when he says the word Sela. When he says the word Sela, so Sela means... It's, an, it's a word that he made up, and it's an emphasis word. And he wants us to pay attention. So here, whenever we see this unusual writing together, Hashem Elohim, that means we're having all three names of Hashem. Aleph, Dalit, Nun, Yud. I have Aleph, celery. One second, one second. Aleph, Dalit, Nun, Yud is... Oh, where did it go? Sorry. They muted me. They muted you. No, I have to mute you. I'm, just, I'm just showing you I have... Uh, celery, celery. Okay, Mazel tov. I don't know what celery means, but okay, I'm glad you get celery. You said cella. A celery. <laughs> I said celery. You're working with celery. There you go. That's a Jewish balabusta. Here's a Jewish balabusta. She hears Torah while she's while she's cooking. I, I was wondering why you say celery because we can get celery now. I'm thinking, why is she saying celery? Maybe it's Okay, anyway, Hashem Elohim. It's true that, so what do we have? We have three names of God. We have Aleph, Aleph, Nun, Yud. That's the name of God in the, in the sphere of Malchus. And then we have Yud, Kei, Vav, Kei. That's the name of God in the sphere of Teferis. And then we have the Nikud, which we read as Elohim. It's not written, but it's read as Elohim. That's the sphere of Hashem in Givura, power. So we have all these strong names of Hashem here. And we say, Hashem, I trust you when you're in Malchus. I trust you when you're in Givura. I trust you when you're in Teferis. I trust you. I hope to you. And you know what, Hashem? You've been taking care of me since I'm young. Mivtachim means my, but I am, but I'm boteach in you. I trust you, and you have been the source of my protection. Minurai, since I'm young. Tell me, can all of you go back in your minds to remember when you almost did something so stupid and Hashem just took it out of your hands and fixed you and saved you? Okay, not always does He do, not always does He do that. It's true. But certainly Hashem has been taking care of us our whole life. How in the world did we get to this stage and age if not for Hashem taking care of us every second? You know, somebody sent me a thing. Uh, whatever. You know how it is. You miss the bus. You think, okay, here in Israel, we don't want to say the bus is going to blow up. We don't want to say that. Or the plane will have an accident. We don't want to say that. But, you know, it could be that on the bus or on the plane was going to be somebody that you don't like, or was going to give you a hard time, whatever. And yeah, Hashem made you miss it. So you're, you know, you're upset. And then Hashem said, what are you talking about? I just did you the biggest favor. That's okay. I'm watching over you, says Hashem. And sometimes, sometimes I make it seem like I'm not watching over you so that you can see the contrast between when the Hashkacha is very clear, when the providence is very clear, and when it's not so clear. I have a cousin who was working in the same, that building that blew up in 9-11 in America, the World Trade Center. My cousin's husband works there. 
And that morning he was late and he was so annoyed with himself. Another cousin went that morning to Slichos. And he normally doesn't, but he said, okay, once a week I'll go to Slichos at least. And he went that morning, he was saved. And he was nervous the whole time on the way in. And my boss going to say something, whatever. Everybody has those stories, ladies. Mina Urai from our childhood, from our youth. This week I'll share with you a personal. This week, you know, everybody is, everybody is, we're all trying very hard to spiritually develop and grow and be better and be closer to Hashem. Because all that is, the only thing that exists really is Hashem. And everything that we see that we're going through is Hashem's way of trying to get us to come close to Him and to be aware of Him. So this week, I had a crazy thing happen to me. Not crazy, it was the biggest gift from Hashem, an amazing gift from Hashem. I'll combine two stories that happened to me. It's a very funny, funny thing. But I, out of nowhere, I began to think about a memory that I haven't had in many, many, many years. And how did that memory come to me? It's a funny thing. It was a funny thing. I just told it yesterday to one of my really, really, really spiritual friends. Maybe you'll like the story, maybe you won't. It happened to me. I have, a, I, it's in the other room. I bought myself like a little speaker that I could have the phone in one room and put the shear and I could hear the shear also in the other room. So I bought the speaker and yesterday it didn't work. I didn't understand why it didn't work and I'm trying and fixing it and trying. It doesn't work. It doesn't connect to my phone. So I uh, charged it. I thought maybe it's not charged. It doesn't connect to the phone. It's, it's a Wi-Fi. That means it doesn't have to touch the phone. But when you press the Bluetooth, it's called a Bluetooth. When you press the Bluetooth on the phone, it's supposed to attach to the speaker. It isn't attached. And I'm very frustrated. But okay, yes, I let it go because I don't have, who has time now to be frustrated? Nobody has time to be frustrated about silly things like this. Anyway, I'm in the room listening to the shear, and all of a sudden I hear another sound. It's very strange. I hear a sound coming out of that speaker. Not the sound of the shear, a sound of music coming out of that speaker. I'm looking like, how, where is this? It's not attached to anything, this speaker. What's going on? I felt like I was, Shem is making me like one of these supernatural, outer space, outer limits, like, I don't know, crazy thing. There was a speaker that was not attached to anything. It wasn't um, paired with any of my um, devices. And music is coming out of it. And what music is coming out? Music from 30 years ago that I used to like. From 30 years ago. Old, old, old. I haven't heard that music in Mamish maybe 30 years. I'm thinking, what is going on, Hashem? What are you doing? How are you doing this? I'm not worthy of an open, outright miracle. It was a Lamal And I'm, I didn't know what to do. I looked at the phone. I thought, it's coming from the phone. It wasn't coming from the phone. Then, then, hours, so I'm, I'm saying to Hashem, okay. You want me to transport, you're transporting me back to an earlier, earlier time. And then Hashem put thoughts into my head. Everybody, this happens to them all the time. Hashem puts thoughts into your head. And I thought, I, I felt two things. One thing I remember the person that I have to dive for from all those years back. And another thing I remember, Hashem did me a very big favor. He took care of me. I remember a memory from my youth, from when I was a little kid. Hashem sent me such a message. Anyway. So I'm just, I'm just using that. I'm doing that. I'm talking to Hashem about these two topics, and then I decided to to check my iPad, and sure enough, somehow the music was coming out of my iPad. How did the iPad get to attached to the speaker? I'm not sure, and I didn't even know that I had this music on my iPad. The bottom line is, we have Tachim Hashem sent me back to a memory that I would not have had of my youth and how He took care of me and how He sent me a. Now, minurai means when I was a teenager. Now we're going earlier, next passage. From the time that I was in my mother's stomach, I was in my mother's stomach, you have Hashem have been, my, you, you have, have, been, have been taking care of me. Not just from my youth, but from my babyhood. From my, when I was in my, when I was, my mother was pregnant with me. Hashem, you've been taken care of. Tell me, is that not true? Of course it's true. 
Hashem is taking care of us. Who in olden times, how what was the mortality rate and birth? Women, I don't know, fifty percent of women died in childbirth, and fifty percent of babies didn't make it either. So you Hashem, I'm gonna praise you forever. Just because you've been taking care of me. You've been taking care of me since I'm born, even before I was born. Zavad Amel said in another parakensilim, he said, before I even knew myself, you Hashem had my whole life mapped out for me. You know that I heard two very big tzaddikim say the same to Torah in one week. Neither of them are connected to each other in any way, so I'll share it with you. <laughs> Let's imagine that one of your children, you know, they say this about children who are newly married. They say, you know, don't don't interfere in their life. Instead, just give them a lot of money. Whenever they need send presents, give money. Just don't ask them how they're doing. That's a advice that some people give to newly married, new new in-laws. In other words, if your children just get married in general. They are now on their own, even maybe later on in life, later as they're married a few years. Send money, open your checkbook, keep your mouth shut and keep your checkbook open. That's what they used to say. So imagine that the only time you ever hear from your married children um, is when they need something. Chometz means uh, it means like Hamas, it means an enemy. Imagine that the only time you ever heard from your kids was when they need something. Ma, can you do me a favor? I need this. Ma, can you do me a favor? I need that. And how are you? Okay, but I can't talk to you right now. But just could you send me to this? Could you send me to that? And that's the sum total of your relationship with your children. Now, Baruch Hashem, you know that there are certain people who would be very overjoyed to have even that in there. Some people don't have any relationship with their children. The children don't talk to them. It's very, very heartbreaking. It's 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 a certain level of Gehenna in this world when the children disconnect from the parents. So... It's also a teak when we don't understand what things are going on now, but imagine that you have a relationship with your kids. In other words, they think they have a relationship with you, but the whole relationship is based on mommy, give me, mommy, mommy, daddy, give me. So it's something, but it's not really what you want. So two big tzaddikim in the last two days, I heard from them the following, the same thing from different ends of the spectrum. Don't, when, you, when you're talking to Hashem and you're davening, when you're having a conversation with Hashem, when you're sitting down and doing his photos, don't just unroll and unravel a shopping list. Don't just, I know that we, Hashem is the only one that supplies us. Hashem is the supplier of everything. And especially if you're in a, in an ace or a zone, you know, they always send around these messages. It's, a, it's somebody, so-and-so's your tie, dab them for whatever you want. It's, an, it's a fast day, it's an ace, right on top for whatever you want. But there's a certain level of, if you're in a relationship and the whole in, the whole thing of the relationship is you're always doing tasks together or you're always asking each other for things. Uh, I can't read it now, please. Um, so, um, so that relationship is a, is a compromised relationship. Right? The the best type of relationship is when you just want to be near each other. You don't ask for anything. You don't even need to talk. You just enjoy each other's presence. Presence meaning their being. You don't need anything from them. You don't want anything from them. You don't ask anything from them. You're just very content to be in the same location as they are. That's and and you and you feel each other. So when you're talking to Hashem, don't just be, it's not just about asking Hashem for things and crying to Hashem when things are difficult and even thanking Hashem when things are good. It's not just that. It's trying to feel close to Hashem, trying to appreciate the fact that Hashem is surrounding us and we're in Him and He's in us because we have an Hashem. You know, the Havdil, infinite Havdalas, to make a separation between this and the profane or the sad. You know, sometimes you see people who are married for 80 years or 70 years, right? And one of them is in a home or one of them is has a little bit of memory loss and 
the spouse comes and just sits with them and just sits there. And even if the, the memory impaired spouse doesn't recognize them or doesn't know them, it doesn't matter because they just want to be near each other. They don't even know why. They like to be near each other. I saw once a clip of some, a real life clip of some, some uh, somebody in a nursing home that was visiting his wife and they asked her, do you know who this is? And she said, no, but I so like when he comes. I like when he comes, but I don't know who he, he, she didn't know who he was. And he still comes. That's because two people are sharing the same soul and their proximity gives each other comfort. We share Hashem's soul, so to speak. And we don't understand what Hashem is. We certainly can't quantify him or qualify him or describe him. But we do know what he told us, and that is that there's a neshama inside of us, and that's godly. It's of God. Hashem radiates into us his neshama, his essence, his himself. So it's not just that Hashem is taking care of us because he created us and he is, he's nice to us. It's that Hashem is in us, with us, is us. He's not us. I mean, we're not Hashem, but so sit with Hashem and just, you know, just experience Hashem's presence for, before, and then talk to what, talk and say what you need to do. Just like in every relationship, I told you this last week. There are the tasks that you have to do, the things that the the lists that have to be done, and the carpools that have to be done. And then there's the just sitting and hanging out. I have a I have a friend a friends. Um, uh, they have I think they have thirteen children altogether. I think I, uh, they used to, when we were younger, we were all young, young together, all those years ago. This couple, they used to take a vacation three times a year. They would leave all of their children with babysitters who would come to the house. Whatever. They had, uh, they had access to all these seminary girls and uh, here and they lived here in Israel. And every couple of months, I don't know, three, four months, they will go away for two days, or one day and two nights, or two days and one night, however that works. They will go away, even when they had a baby at home, because they were building their, they just needed to be together and alone. Not necessarily even physically, just I, we need to re-experience who the other one is. So Hashem, because you've been taking care of me forever and ever, I'm going to always praise you. And Tehillah, here's we have, a, we don't have too many words of Tehillim and the word Tehillah and Tehillim. You would think that the word Tehillah would be over and over again repeated in the book of Tehillim. Not so many. Here's one of them. Tehillah T means I'm praising you forever and ever. I'm thanking you forever and ever. I'm emptying myself out and reckoning because the word Tehillah is you know, connected to the word Chalal. Chalal means inside of me an empty space. I'm emptying myself of all my own ego and my needs and my thoughts, and I'm just praising you and, and thanking you. It's easy for me to say this on such a gorgeous day. If it was cold and rainy, it would be harder for me to really feel this, but it's such a such a thankfulness of the gorgeousness of this day today here in Eretz Israel. This is such a, again, every pasuk is so relevant. Kimofet ha'yiti l'rabim. A mofet is generally, we, we generally translate the word mofet as a as a miracle. It literally means a sign, like an ot umofet, a sign that's from, from heaven or a sign that something happens. Mofet is something unusual that usually has a message. Here, <coughs> David Melch is saying, Mofet ha'yiti l'rabim. People look at me with the rabim, they look at me like weird. Like I'm something different, something unusual. But but you Hashem, but but you Hashem have been the source of my protection. I I run to you. You're my fortress. What does that mean? David Melchner was not speaking about himself personally, although it related to him personally for sure. As you know, David Melch had a lot of opposition in his life. A lot of misunderstanding. People, just like Yosef HaTzadik was misunderstood by his brothers, David HaMelch was also misunderstood by his brothers. By many, many people. Same thing with Yosef HaTzadik, David HaMelch. These two Mashiachs, these Mashiach characters, were these Mashiachim, 
these Mashiachim, they were hard to read. And people thought so, but they couldn't figure him. So people who were on his wavelength and on Hashem's wavelength, they understood David HaMelech completely. And they were devoted to him, constantly devoted to him. But the people who weren't in the, they were a little bit off in one way or the other, they didn't quite get him. And that's why he had enemies within the Jewish people. People said Lash and Har about him. And even when he was a king, he was critiqued and criticized. Same thing else if it's Satic. So personally, it works on him, this person. But really, he was saying that for the Jewish people. We are unusual in the eyes of the world. They don't get us. Listen, there are much more weird people in the world than us. You have these in Australia, you have these uh, tribes, you have tribes in Africa. You have really strange people in this world. I mean, they have strange cultures. I won't say strange people, but there are strange cultures in this world. Um, you have strange, weird and strange philosophies in this world. But, but, but Robinson, then, we're, we're successful. That's one of the things. We're a successful people. That's so the, the whole world doesn't pay attention to any of those other strange uh, uh, groups or thoughts. But the whole world is fixated on the Jewish people. Kimofet Haiti Lerabim. To all the people in the world, I stood out as something unusual. And it's true that we're successful. And it's true that we're moral. And it's true that we brought morality into the world. And that's why the world hates us because of her Sinai. Sinai sounds like the word Sina. Sina means hatred. Chazal tell us that from the time of Harsinai, when we received the Torah, Sina, anti-Semitism and hatred to the Jewish people came into the world because we give them a conscience. We say you can't steal, you can't kill, you can't commit adultery, you can't do all those things. You can't be Hamas. And they say, why? They want to be. It's fun to kill and murder and chop off heads and act like animals. So we, the Jewish people, this passage goes to the Jewish people. We became a mofet now. But I, I put my, I escaped to you, Hashem. No, there's not, there's no army as moral as the Israeli army, and there's no army as criticized as the Israeli army. And you could speak to soldiers, and they'll tell you how they had to go round and round and round until they could get the enemy. Instead of bombing them without problems, they had to go on foot. And we lost soldiers like that. And that's not halachically permissible at all. The army is not, is not working in a halachically permissible way. You're not allowed to endanger a Jewish life for the sake of saving non-Jewish lives. Simple. And the only way to have won this war was in the beginnings if we had had a Torah army. Well, first of all, if we had a Torah army, Mashiach would come already and the world would be moral and Hamas would be a, a you know, a joke in people's eyes. It'd be, it wouldn't happen. But if we were, if this is a process and we were already run by a, a, a Torah army who kept halacha, then not one soldier would have been killed in this. The first day, maybe we would have had but otherwise, since then, not one soldier would have been lost. Because uh, you bomb from above, and that's all. Like the Americans do, and like the Russians do, and like the Chinese do, and like the Ukrainians do. But we don't. We stand out. And the mo as much as we stand out, it's not good enough. Because there's nothing until Mashiach comes. They're not going to understand us. They're not going to care about us. And don't even think about impressing any guy. Period. Finished. So what do I want to do all day long, Hashem? What do, I, what do I want to do all day long? All day long? I'm busy all day long. I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, I'm shopping, I'm working. I have, I have a job to do. I have kids to take care of. I have my parents to take care of. I have things to do. What am I supposed to be doing all day long? Praising you. And how do you praise Hashem all day long? Well, listen, it's easy when you're in the kitchen. It's easy when you're, you could. You're always in, you're in the car. You could talk to Hashem all day long. But another way of praising Hashem is by being the best Jew you could be. By radiating goodness, by radiating happiness, by radiating non-judgmental love to other Jews. Everybody's saying that now, that there was nothing, you know, it says in the Gemara, that if we don't do tshuva, when Mashiach is supposed to come, Hashem is going to bring an enemy like Haman, 
and then we'll finally do tshuva. That's what he did. Because he called Haman, Hamas, it's the same word. Haman, Hamas, very similar. The hay and the ches are interchangeable. The mem is the same. And the nun and the samach in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the aleph phase, right next to each other. That's exactly what the major says. He's going to bring an enemy like Haman. Haman is Hamas. And we're all doing tshuva. What are we doing tshuva? We're doing tshuva on the, on the, on the midst of Yahafta Larecha Kamocha. Because Yahafta Larecha Kamocha means I'm going to love you and treat you with respect and dignity. Now, we are very from. The Jewish people are very makbid. We're very from. We have every hechsher. You, I mean, I'm sure none of you would eat anything unless it had the best, best rabbinical supervision, most careful rabbinical supervision. And your kitchens, you have a milchik sign, a dairy sign, and a, and a meat sign. I didn't have, when I was a kid, we didn't have, we had one sink in America. One sink, and we had to take out the dish train from, when you wash the dishes from milchik to fleshik sienna, take out the dish train, wash down the sink, and then put the other dish train in. <coughs> Who had things like that? Now we have Milcha kitchen, Flesha kitchen. We have a Pesach kitchen. Ah, we're so religious. And there's one mitzvah that we needed help in. So Hashem sent Hamas to help us do this mitzvah, and that is loving each other and not judging. And that's what I said before, that 70% of the Israelis want Mashiach because 70% of the Israelis say that we're never going to go back to that way that we were before November 7th of people saying, I hate you and I'm not your sister and I'm not your brother and I don't like your hashkafa and I hate you and I'm not going to talk to you. That was what's going on here. And you can't put a machitz up in Tel Aviv. Wah! No, no more. 70% of the Israelis did tshuva already on that very important mitzvah. I hope I am also doing tshuva on that important mitzvah. So all day long, how can you be praising Hashem either by verbalizing like my good friend says, Yishtabach I have one of those real Yemenite friends. And she's always Yishtabach Shemoing. All day long. Yishtabach is like the Yemenite way of saying Baruch Hashem. It means may his name be praised. But she says it with a geshmak. Such a Yishtabach Shemo. All the time. It's every other word by her. It's Yishtabach Shemo. Whenever you say something that we would say Baruch Hashem, like the, the Chayalim came back, okay, Yishtabach Shemo. That's how she is. So you could be saying that all day long. That's one way. Or you could be acting in such a way that people look at you, they say, look, Hashem, you have good people. You have good Jews. You must love the Jewish people. You must love your people because look how good they are. You see that guy, Shai uh, Grousher? He goes to every kind of a house to bring presents. And Yes, religious, not religious, nothing, doesn't matter a drop. He cries for every story. Yesterday, one of them, one of the big rabbis, one of these big hero rabbis, who's a very incredibly holy man. So he sent out a video, uh, and he sent out a video on his Telegram. Telegram is like a better kind of a thing than WhatsApp. Um, and he sent it out, either he or his assistant, um, and he, the bottom, and the thing was, Imash, it was uh, the, uh, the speaker was the mother of so of a certain chayel, a certain soldier who was killed, and the uh, message was, you have to listen to this chayel lishma, you have to listen to this. So I, I clicked on it. It was a video of this woman talking about talking about um, Achtas, and she's in pants, and she's not dressed like a Haredi, and this super super Haredi rabbi sent it out. And he said, you must watch this. Because she was talking about Achtos and about... So it's so interesting how we're really, we're really not... Somebody sent around, the, we're not paying attention anymore to separations. We're trying our best. Another boy who lost his eye, another one who's still in the hospital, he said, no, he lost his leg. And he was, not, and he was in the hospital. He was by the Kotel. And he said, he's happy to have given his leg for the Jewish people if... We keep up the achtos. That's the deal he's making with the Jewish people. Keep up the achtos, and he's not going to mourn his lost leg. The young kid looked like he was not even 20 years old. What kind of life does such a boy have? So, am I up to that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So here we are. Um, um, so here we are. Uh, all day long I want to be a walking Kiddush Hashem 
all day long, I want to be that if people, either I'm verbalizing it or, or if I'm saying it to myself, or if I'm just being. Now listen, all of you can relate to this. If you're over the age of, I don't know, 40, don't throw, we say this in, in Yosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, in the Nusach of the Ashkenaz, and the Nusach of the Sfarn, we say this Pasuk in Shema Koleinu, that powerful prayer, Shema Koleinu, where everyone stands up, they open the Aron Kodesh, and everybody stands up and they, they say it line by line, don't, don't abandon me when I get old. When I have no more strength left, please Hashem, don't let go of me. Now, again, anybody who feels old can say this. So people who are 35 already feel old. I remember one of my students, she came in one, one day uh, to, to school, to Neve, and she was like, her face was like, like, you know, in a not, not happy face. So I said, what's the matter? What's the matter? And she said, I guess I feel so old. It's my birthday today. I said, oh, yeah, how old are you? She said, 20. So I burst out laughing. I'm sure all of you are laughing also. I'm not looking at the screen right now at, the, at your faces, but she felt, she said, I'm no longer a teenager. I'm 20. I'm an adult. I feel so old. So however you, however old you feel, and I have people, I don't feel old, and I'm much older than 20. But when you feel old, you have to say to Hashem, please help me when I feel, when I'm feeling old. And with this will almost will end. Rabbi Nachman from Resa said, don't ever get old. They asked him, Rebbe, what do you mean? That's not a good thing. He said, no, you could get met, you could get advanced in years. You could be 120 years old, years, 120 years old, but don't get old. In other words, always be a kid. Always be fresh and lively and energetic and optimistic in your serving of God and in the way you live your life. Always be a child, not childish, but childlike. Be excited. You see how kids are. They're so excited. Every day they get up and there's a new adventure. They're children. Before they're spoiled, before they go to school, all that stuff. I school is so hard for children. Let's hope when Mashiach comes, the kids will have either a fixed school or whatever. But children don't feel pressure. They just feel excitement in life. They feel like a gishmak in life. So Rabbi Nachman said, stay, get old in years, but stay young at heart. So we'll end with this. Now I see that a lot of you, so don't push me away, Hashem. When I feel, and also it means when I feel old, meaning when I feel like I have no energy. Did you ever feel like that? That you just don't have energy to serve Hashem? So you have to say to Hashem, Hashem, I'm too tired to have a mincha now. I'm so tired. I'm so this. I'm so distracted. Please help me. So you can be old, feeling old, and feeling en- lack of energy, feeling listless. Al tashlecheni, say this pasuk, learn it by heart. Al tashlecheni leisizikna. Here in Eretz Israel, it's a very often repeated pasuk when people are not well, people are older, and they they have to take it. Whatever people say this all the time. Al tashlecheni leisikna, or or in plural, al tashlecheni leisikna. Kislos kochenu, al tazvenu. That's how we say it in uh, Rosh Hashanah and Kippur Davening. Okay, now I see you, you sent me all these notes and I can't read them when I'm teaching and they black my whole screen. So now I'm going to read them and see what you said. Are we supposed to also love unconditionally those Jews who are calling for a ceasefire? They don't, they, we don't, we have to not think about them because we don't know how to react to them. We don't think about them right now or we doubt that they should do tshuva. Uh, I answered that. You uh, okay, right? Okay, that's where we answered that, Ellen, that that uh, it's all the names of Hashem now, and we're we're seeing Hashem's name, and we're seeing how, we're we're trusting Hashem when Hashem, <coughs> when our Creator is relating to us on any level, we trust. Let me see what I'm reading. Else wrote. Uh, okay, now the the ceasefire people, they have if, if they're Jews, we have to find out if they're really Jews. If they're not Jews, then we don't have to have any positive feelings towards them because then they are our enemies if they are if they are not Jews. And if they are Jews, then they're misled Jews. And they're the kind of people who have been miseducated. If they're educated and they still choose to make these kinds of decisions, then we don't have an obligation to, to uh, love and judge favorably our enemies, even if our enemies are Jews. We do not, to my understanding, 
We don't have an obligation to love them. We have an obligation to daven for them. So somebody sent around a very funny, a very funny Photoshop. Did you see it? It's Netanyahu looking like with a beard, like a like a a shortish, shortish, not totally short, but shortish, trim gray beard, like whitish, and a hat and a suit. So somebody made such a Photoshop of him. First, I didn't know what it was. And then I looked and I said, oh, that's his face. He doesn't have to grow a beard and he doesn't have to put on a hat and jacket. He has to do tshuva. Um, that pasuk is in Shema Koleinu, in, the, in both Shacharis and, and uh, Musaf, and maybe even Mincha, of, of um, uh Chazaras when the when the repeater when the when the Chazan repeats the Shmona Esrei, we have a paragraph that begins with the words Shema Koleinu, Shema Koleinu, Shema Koleinu, Chuzurach Koleinu, and in most congregations, we they open the Aron Kodesh before they say that, and even people who sit during the PUTM, you know, there are certain. When I was a kid, I didn't know you could sit down, and I was like, I used to dread Rosh Hashanah and Kippur because of the sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up. I was tired. Now. I can know that there's a custom that even when the Aron Kodesh is open, when the Ark is open, you can still sit sometime in the if you if you need to. But it's one of those places that even people who sit during the repetition of the Shemona Esrei stand up for that. So look in your machsa, you'll find it. It's in that paragraph. What else, ladies? Let me say hi to everybody now. Hi, Sharon, again, and hi, <laughs> Naomi. Hi, Jenny. And hi, Lisa, and hi, Marcel. And hi, who is the Zoom user? I forgot. She just, I said hi to her. Hi, Ellen. And hi, you spot you. Oh, let me see. Let me see. It's cute. That's a new thing now. Oh, you did it regular. There's a new thing now, a new style. You put it in the top with a bunch of tie, uh, you tie it twice, and then you let it flop down. I saw that style. You have to be young to do that style. It's, uh, hi, it's Jewish pigtails. Uh, Jewish pigtails. Cute. Hi, Sarala. Mm -hmm. And hi, Davida. Thank you so much, Davida. For coming and hi, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. MK, and hi, Mrs. Singer, and hi, Aviva, and hi, Geraldine, and hi, Dvor Hinda, and hi, Golda, Julia Golda, and hi, Shella, and hi, Carmen, and hi, who did I say hi to? Gila, and hi, Katie, and I don't know who else I didn't say hello to. Okay, you saw. Okay, ladies, have a great, great Shabbos. Robertson, I just want to say that. Air of Rav are also showing their head now, aren't they? Absolutely. Yeah. What can one do about that? We just have to let it go. We can't. They're they're our enemy in a sense, but they have Jewish neshamas, I think. Hashem has to take care of them. That's the final, according to Rabbi Kesson, the final final exile after Yishmael is the air of Rav, oh. and he said it's the hardest exile because they are halachically born from Jewish mothers. It's the hardest, hardest exile, and Hashem has to take care of it. We listen. We can elect. We can get rid of them by not electing them anymore. Um, yeah, Jonathan Pollard. They have to do tshuva. Hashem has to help them do tshuva. That's all. Hashem has to show them the truth. Either they're either they listen. Erev Rav, you remember when Erev Rav was Moshe? The first Erev Rav was Moshe Rabbeinu's chevra. One sec. That's okay. a the first, the first era of Rav, Moshe Rabbeinu was the one who uh, invited them, and they were Egyptians. They were, but he saw that they were neshamas that had potential. Now they're Jews. Okay, we don't know. We, Baruch Hashem, we're not Hashem. Hashem is going to figure out a way. We just have to thank Him and love Him and serve Him and make Him proud. That's what we have to do. Thank you. Okay, thank you for all the thank yous. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Uh, thank you. Good, good, good. Okay. Um, and we'll welcome back uh, Rabbis and Dub next week. She's doing big misses in Gibraltar now and uh, bringing Yiddishkeit there and helping people there and whatever. So that's Rat Hashem. Ladies, have a good Shabbos. Keep your eyes focused on the land of Israel. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you very much. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Bye.